it is well established in the Brody Robertson lore, in the Brody Robertson ethos, that I use Arch Linux, that I like Arch Linux, and I could sit here and tell you all day about why you should use it, why everybody should use it, why it's the best beginner distro ever, and I'm sure you've heard all of those things plenty of times. But let's ignore that whole spiel and flip it on its head. Let's go over some of the legitimate reasons why you probably shouldn't be using Arch. One of the big reasons why people use a rolling release like Arch Linux is to have access to the latest software available. And for people like me who actually want to test the latest software, who actually do want to use some of those really, really new features, that's really good. I love that I can do that. But most people don't really need that. Your workflow is probably not going to dramatically change if you have a kernel that is like five versions newer. It's not going to dramatically change if Vim is a little bit newer, if your terminal is a little bit newer, if you have a slightly newer GNOME version. All of the stuff that you typically do probably isn't going to be affected by a newer version. And for things where it actually is important, things like security patches, generally these are going to get backported to those older versions. And in cases where you do want newer software for things like gaming, where you want newer drivers and newer kernels, you don't need to go all the way to something like Arch. You can just use a semi-rolling release like, say, PopOS and get basically the same experience for your use case. It won't be every single day. It won't be every single month. It may not even be once a quarter. But when you are using Arch Linux, you are occasionally going to see some various packaging issues. I can say from my personal experience, I've seen things like PGP keys expiring, so I actually can't update my system until I go and download the latest keys. I've seen things like manual intervention, where some random file is not being tracked by Pac-Man, or maybe it's been renamed or deleted, and I need to go and actually manually handle it myself. And this isn't really a big deal for technical users, people like me, who are willing to actually spend that time. But if you're not someone who wants to do that, if you just want to have your system basically be working all the time, that can be a big hassle, especially when it happens when you actually are trying to get work done. Since we're talking about packaging, we have to talk about the AUR. So Arch Linux, unlike things such as Ubuntu, Red Hat, and Fedora, are not corporate distros. Now, this is great in some ways where the users have a much greater level of control over the direction the project takes. But in other ways, it is a drawback, mainly in things like package availability. Not to say that it's hard to get packages on Arch. There's about 13,000 things in the repos. But occasionally the AUR feels like a bit of a crutch, where you'll see apps which seem to be packaged everywhere else, but then on Arch Linux are only available on the AUR, which I don't understand. Or if they are in the standard repos, some things like OBS, which I'm not going to let up until they actually fix it, are packaged wrong, where you need to rely on the AUR version to make it actually function like it should be functioning. But just because the AUR is a crutch doesn't mean that it's not useful. Sometimes you need to use crutches, and occasionally you'll see things that are on the AUR which aren't packaged anywhere else, which is really, really cool. To be fair though, distros like Ubuntu effectively have the same problem with things like PPAs. Now we have to talk about choice, because choice is one of the biggest reasons why I use Arch Linux. I run a window manager. I go and individually pick every single application I want to run. In many ways, I have a really custom system, and when you're doing this, this is where Arch really, really shines. But if you're not like me, if you just want to go and have something easily set up, you want to go and install GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon, XFC, and things like that, and basically just live inside of your desktop environment, the experience you get on Arch Linux is basically the same experience you get on any Arch-based distro, and it's the same experience you get on anything Debian-based or Fedora-based or anything else out there, with the exception, basically, of the package manager being different. So why don't you just skip the step of using base Arch and use something where it's already pre-installed? Now, while we're dispelling myths about Arch, let's talk about the manual installation, the most sacred thing about Arch that can never be changed. 
So a lot of people who like to shill Arch Linux, myself included in the past, will say things similar to this. By doing the manual installation, it'll teach you so much about your system that you would never have known. Things like petitioning, things like account setup, setting up your bootloader, network configuration, mounting drives, your FS tab file, and all of this fun stuff. And in some ways, that's certainly true. Yes, you can learn all these things if you want to. The install guide has a lot of information about how to actually install Arch. There are some things that are missing here, which I do think should be added. And in many ways, I think the Gen 2 guide is vastly superior. But yes, you can learn things. But let's look at LFS for a moment. If there's any way we're going to learn how your system works, it's by going through Linux from scratch. Literally going from having nothing. You have your original system, and then you bootstrap an entirely new system, compiling everything from source, and even going over fixing some of the source code, which is a little bit messed up, and patches you have to apply, things like that. This is one way you can learn everything about your system. But you don't have to learn anything. You will learn something if you pay attention to the steps that you are taking, you take in what you're doing, you go and read the options you're running, you check out what the commands you're running are actually doing, that's when you learn something. If all you're doing though is going, okay, run this, run this, run this, okay, run this, yep, run this, run this, you don't learn anything from that. All you do is you just memorize a sequence. And this effect may be exaggerated, not by using the install guide, but by instead watching an install video on something like YouTube and things like that. Not to say that you shouldn't be going and doing that, but just because you're going through this manual installation doesn't mean you suddenly know a lot more about your system. Only if you put in the work will you learn something. And while we are on the Arch Wiki, let's actually talk about it. The Arch Wiki is an absolutely incredible resource for so many pieces of software and so many things you might want to do with your system. Even for people who are not currently using Arch, even if you're on Ubuntu, Debian, Gen 2, Void, or anything else out there, the information on the Arch Wiki is still going to be useful. But the Arch Wiki is by no means perfect, and there is a lot of cases where information is missing. For example, the Pipewire page is very much not complete. You're going to see a lot of stuff about, like, this article needs expansion. This article needs expansion. There's one part in here. I believe it is still here. Yeah, the factual accuracy of this article or section is disputed. And sure, this is just one article, but this is one article on something really, really popular being Pipewire. There are so many smaller projects out there that do have ArchWiki pages that don't even have these banners here, but are missing a lot of really, really basic information. So you go to the ArchWiki expecting to have basically everything you need, but you realize that's just not the case. Not to say that what is here can't be useful, in many cases it is going to be and is going to send you down some sort of rabbit hole to go and search for the rest of the information, but it's not this perfect resource that some people make it out to be. And the final point I want to make is on those cases where you need to reinstall Arch or install Arch on a new system, it is a massive pain. When you want to install something like Ubuntu, Manjaro, Endeavor, actually most of the distros out there, when you install the distro, pretty much everything you need is already set up out of the box. Maybe it's missing some of the apps you need. Maybe you want to go and use a certain video editor or a certain terminal and things like that. But every time I've installed Arch, it's minimum been like a whole afternoon, a whole night project. Not the installation part itself. That's totally fine. You usually get that done in like half an hour to an hour. It's the post setup. Getting all of your software reinstalled and getting it all configured the way you want it. Obviously, you can go and build install scripts. You can go and make sure your dot .files are stored in some separate location so you can pull them down whenever you need them. But just setting that stuff up is going to take you quite a bit of time. And even considering all of those problems, I still use Arch, and I still think Arch is a great distro, but it's a great distro for certain people. If you want to have a completely custom system, you want to spend some time 
setting up all of the software you want to use. You want to go and pick and choose exactly what you want. You want to go and have the latest software available. You want to have a system that you can truly say is your system with how much you've done to it. I fully encourage you to go and give it a shot and not just Arch. Give something like Void and Gen to a shot as well because maybe whatever is different about them is going to you know fit what you want to do instead. But Arch is not for everyone and you don't have to buy into the hype that some people are shilling. If Arch is the thing for you, go and use it. But if you don't want to, that's totally fine as well. But let me know what you think. This is the one chance you get, the one excuse you get to hate Arch on my channel, so be sure to use it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers, the only barrel pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me and how to do my outro. I'm out.